And by the way, unfortunately, it's just not quite true. That, that song is uh, kind of wishful thinking in a way because uh, right now there's a big fight in our state uh, about a or battle, you might say, about uh, a factory, a hog factory. Uh, had, strangely enough, appeared on the watershed uh, on a tributary six miles from the river. 6,000 confined hogs in this karst terrain which makes Swiss cheese. And so part of the reason we're doing this uh, this particular project is to uh, is to keep that issue alive, to keep people thinking about what a special thing we have. We didn't want to write graphic songs about hog barns, you know. <laughs> but the history, you know, and when they, you know, when they when they were going to make it a national park, if they made it a lake, a lot of people that lived down in the in the watershed right down there would have had it been moved. And when they made it a national park, people down in the basin there had it on the river banks had to be moved. And one of those people was Granny Henderson. And she's my Shira. She lived on the banks of the Buffalo River until she was 80 years old. And this picture was actually in National Geographic back in the 1970s. We had to get special permission to use this, this image. And she had um, chickens and cows and a garden. And, and she, she cut her own wood and just an amazing animal. But it was quite sad. Yeah, that's true. Actually, the cabin's still there. You can you can still visit the cabin, and uh, we, we were real, real pleased. Uh, there was a, we were playing uh, for some young folks uh, at a school in, in Harrison, Arkansas, and, and a little girl got so enchanted by this story that she just dragged her mom over there. It's really hard to get to. You got to go through the woods, and, and she eventually got there and, and uh, found the cabin and took this wonderful little picture of her virtue in the top floor of the cabin and sent it to us. It really made it all worthwhile. You know. So in the song, I tried to put myself in Granny Henderson's shoes and write it from her perspective.
the songs from our Buffalo River collection are, are really just the rest of the story when it comes to a name of a place. So um, when you go down the river, you, there's all these, these places, like, for instance, this is one of them, Sam's Throne. Looks it's like that little knoll right there. Looks pretty much like any other bluff you might find on the river, and there's lots of beautiful bluffs on the Buffalo River. But uh, this one, it turns out, thanks to Ken Smith, uh, a lot of these stories have been preserved, and they're very unusual stories. Um, Sam Smith. Sam Davis. Sam Davis, excuse me. Sam, Sam Davis was, uh, came to Arkansas very early, uh, one of the earliest settlers <laughs> in about 1830. Growing artifacts. <laughs> um, 18, 1830 was uh, pretty early for settling the Ozark for the European settlers. In, and, uh, but when he got there, um, well, his, his sister came and joined him, and uh, they were, he was very fond of his sister, but, but uh, she disappeared. She was maybe, kidnapped. Maybe kidnapped. They say she was kidnapped. And so um, he was very distraught, and he was a, being a very religious man, he coped with it in the most unusual way. We have a lot of eccentric people in Arkansas. <laughs> um, what he did was he climbed that bluff that you just saw a picture of, and he would sit up, stand up there all day long and preach. And as far as we know, there weren't a whole lot of people down there to hear this mm -hmm. sermon. But, but he know, did it for years. Mm -hmm. He kept this up. And it was really interesting because when his sister came to live with him, she had some gold. And the legend says that he took a walking stick and, and carved a hole into the walking stick and put all of her gold in there. And so every morning he would hike up the mountain with that walking stick with the gold in it. And they say that when he died, it's, it, it was buried up there somewhere on the mountain. So I keep telling everyone we need to do a, a treasure hunt. So this is, there's, there's more to the story. This is the rest of the story of Sam Davis. Sam's throne. They call it Sam's throne.
Well, you know, today we have the best day. We, 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 uh, something we love to do when we come to Albuquerque is go down to Bosque del Apache. And uh, Valerie and I are a long time uh, bird obsessed, bird obsessed, you might say. My family was bird obsessed, so I knew it was forced on me. We saw a peregrine falcon and a bittern. American bittern is always a treat to see, especially from 10 feet away. And uh, it was, it's just wonderful. You know, in the winter, of course, the crane, the, the sandhill cranes are there, and uh, they're gone now, but the, there's lots of stuff to walk see. And, but the reason I mention that is because um, we also love uh, birding in, 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 in Arkansas. And one thing special about the Buffalo River is it provides a habitat that supports some birds that are actually declining very disturbingly. In, in, our, in, our, in our area. Yeah. And uh, there's some birds that might be familiar to you. Yeah, the Louisiana water thrush, the Chuck Wills widow, the Cerulean warbler, and the wood thrush. We asked um, our local ornithologist, the one who wrote the Arkansas Bird Book, what birds were struggling, and that's what he told us those birds. Hey, will you do the, um, your impression of the, of the wood thrush? The wood, the. Um, now, Sarah's in the audience. You could make uh, there's yeah. an ornithologist in the audience, and she's going to make me but, do it. Uh, but I, you have an excuse because the wood thrush has two vocal boxes and he doesn't, so his isn't perfect. Okay? Not even close. No, do it, do it, do it. But it, it's a beautiful call that um, all the thrushes have a beautiful spiraling song. And, this is one of my favorites. See, it starts really low and it goes clear out of our hearing range, so I'll just kind of simulate that. But uh, something like this. Uh,
not love quit at the end. But it's called beef love. It's for many, many, million, zillion years. It was a hive of bees about 80 feet up. And actually, we got to kind of figure it, feel what 80 feet up was because we went to Mandalier National Monument and you can climb a 30 foot ladder and then you can climb another 30 foot ladder and then you can climb another 30 foot ladder up to this little cave. So. Yeah, I gave you a little bit more of a conception of what that's like. So this is the actual story of Bee Bluff. Two young boys in, back in the, what, in the 1800s, they, early 1900s, built an 80 foot ladder to get the honey. Oh. And it was really sweet because we were um, playing this song, uh, this show, in the little town of Ponca where those boys were from. And after the show, a young man came up and said, I'm the great grandson of one of those boys. Oh. And, and, and he said that I actually had the story of a law. Oh. I'll tell you at the end. Friend in, in, Fayetteville, in our hometown, 
And uh, he moved to Albuquerque, and he's here tonight. Joshua Newman is over there. Let's see over there. And it's, it's and it's for his birthday for tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we have to this for Joshua. We thought we'd sing happy birthday, but in a slightly different way than you might have heard before. So. <laughs> Yes. Mm-hmm. 
Bushwhackers, uh, which, which, which is basically a bunch of hoodlums uh, left over from war, uh, just roamed Arkansas, and especially the unpopulated areas such as the Buffalo River Valley, and, and just really terrorized people for 10 years, made it virtually impossible to, to conduct a normal life. And there was a, um, a, a legend from a place called Upper Richland Creek about the bushwhackers and a rooster. And so it's, it's just legend. <laughs> but I need a collective rooster crow to get this started. And I want a er, 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 er kind of rooster crow. Because when we play in Switzerland, and we in Germany, and we ask them to give a rooster crow, they go, Pink, 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 pink. And they're like, what? That's not a rooster crow. And then, we'll say, no, a rooster crow. And they'll go, Pink, 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 pink. Well, that's German rooster. That's how they speak. German. So we want, no, we, no, we want an American rooster crow on the count of three to start this off. Okay. One, two, three. <laughs> Whatever they want. 
very same.